Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the Elisa Lamb case. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. The way I'll structure this video will be the timeline, and then I'll move to the mental health and personality factors. So starting with the timeline, Elisa Lam was born on October 30, 1991 in Vancouver, Canada. She attended the University of British Columbia. At some point, Lam was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She had both manic and depressive episodes. She took medications to control those symptoms. I'll review those medications when I get to the mental health and personality factors. In 2013, she made her way to California on trains and buses. She traveled alone. Her intended final destination was Santa Cruz, California. So this was more or less a vacation. Not long after her arrival, she visited the San Diego Zoo and put photographs that she took there on social media. She would arrive in Los Angeles on January 26 and check into the Cecil Hotel about two days later. Initially, Lamb was given a room on the fifth floor that she shared with other roommates. These roommates complained to hotel management about what they referred to as certain odd behavior. Because of this, Lamb was given her own room. Throughout her trip, she had been in contact with her parents every day. Lamb was supposed to check out of the hotel on January 31, 2013. However, on that day, her parents did not hear from her. They called the police and they flew out to Los Angeles. This is the day that Lamb stopped using her phone altogether. The police searched the hotel, including Lamb's room and the rooftop, but they did not locate her. They spoke with the manager of a nearby bookstore that Lamb had visited. The manager said that she had contact with Lamb on January 31, and she reported that Lamb was outgoing, very lively, and very friendly. Lamb was buying gifts for her family and discussing how the weight of those books could be a factor, like she was worried about carrying around all that weight for the rest of her trip. On or about February 15, the police released the now famous video recorded on February 1 of Lamb in one of the hotel elevators. The camera in this recording was positioned on the ceiling in one of the corners of the elevator looking down inside the elevator. The timestamp was obscured without an explanation from the police. In the video we see Lamb enter the elevator and push the buttons on the control panel. She pushed the buttons for several floors. The door moved slightly, but it did not close. She waits for a moment, then she walks toward the door, leans forward, and looks both ways. She moves back into the elevator and hides in the corner. She steps back into the doorway and leans forward and looks out into the hallway again. She exits the elevator slowly and then kind of jumps out a bit. She backs up into the elevator and then quickly steps out again. She moves over to the left side of the shot in the hallway. She walks back into the elevator and starts pressing many buttons on the control panel again. She pressed many more this time than she did the first time. She walks back out of the elevator to the left side of the shot again. She holds out her hands with her fingers spread apart, waves them around a little bit, and then moves her hands together and makes a motion like she's counting with her fingers. She walks away after this. A few moments later, the elevator door closes and opens a few times as the elevator goes to different floors. Many people claim that the video has been tampered with beyond the obscuring of the timestamp. It was a strange video. It was released by the police, I suppose, in an effort to demonstrate that Lamb was behaving in an odd manner. After this, some of the guests in the hotel began complaining about low water pressure in their rooms. Later, we see people would state that the water was discolored and had an unusual taste. The maintenance staff at the hotel investigated on February 19, Lamb's body was discovered in one of four 1,000-gallon water tanks on the rooftop. A maintenance worker who discovered the body said that it was floating about 12 inches from the top of the tank, facing up. The police were called and they drained the tank and accessed it. Her body was found naked. Her clothing, room key, and watch were also in the tank. The clothing seems to match the clothing she was wearing in that elevator video. Her phone was never recovered. The toxicology report indicated that Lamb had medications in her system that matched her prescription medication. 
but it appears as though she had only taken one of them on the last day she was alive, the antidepressant, although it is really quite difficult to determine this with any level of certainty. She also had ibuprofen in her system and a normal quantity of ethanol. There were no illegal substances in her system. There were no signs of physical trauma or an assault of a sexual nature. We see these theories that there was evidence of this, but what was available in terms of evidence could have occurred because of the decomposition process. So really there was nothing going on here in terms of evidence of an assault. It's not clear how Lam made her way to the roof, but the most likely explanation is that she used a fire escape. She could have done this without setting off any type of alarm. Later on, a police officer who was using a police dog on that scene said the dog detected her scent on the fire escape. The coroner ruled that the cause of death was accidental drowning and that bipolar disorder likely contributed. So that's really the state of the case at this point. The case is considered closed. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. Lamb had at least one time in her history where she went missing for a short time, but she did not have a history of attempting to harm herself. In 2010, she started posting information about how she had a mental disorder, and she also discussed a relapse. This concerned her because she thought she may have to drop out of college. As I mentioned before, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. This disorder is characterized by episodes of mania and depression. So I'll take a quick look at each of these. Mania is characterized by having an extremely high opinion of oneself, like grandiosity, having a decreased need for sleep, being talkative, having racing thoughts, being distractible, increased goal-directed activity, excessive involvement in activities that can result in harm. Depression is characterized by a number of symptoms, including having feelings of worthlessness, sleeping too much or too little, eating too much or too little, and having an inability to find pleasure in activities that used to bring pleasure. Lamb was on several prescription medications, as I mentioned. Specifically, she was taking Effexor, Lamictal, Seroquel, Wellbutrin, and Dexedrine. I'm just using the brand names here. I think it's likely she was on the generic for several of these. I'm going to take a quick look at each of these medications because it does give us some information about what symptoms may have been present. But it is important to recognize that there's no way to figure out what diagnosis somebody has or what exact symptoms they have just from medications because most medications are used for multiple conditions and sometimes they are used off-label meaning they might be used to treat something that they are not approved to treat. Effexor is a bicyclic antidepressant, typically categorized as a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, or SNRI. Interestingly, the drug also weakly inhibits the reuptake of dopamine. It is typically used to treat depression. Lamictal is an anticonvulsant. It's also referred to as an anti-epileptic. It is typically used to delay mood episodes in adults with bipolar disorder. Seroquel is a dibenzothiazepine derivative that is used as an antipsychotic. It is often used to treat people with schizophrenia, but it is not unusual to see it used to treat bipolar disorder. Wellbutrin is an antidepressant and used to promote smoking cessation. It is a weak blocker of the neuronal uptake of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. The last medication was dexedrine, this is a stimulant used to treat ADHD. It's also used to treat narcolepsy sometimes. So what, if anything, can we tell from this combination of medications? Well, the diagnosis that she reported, bipolar disorder, seems consistent with these medications. Two things really stand out here for me. One is the number of medications for depression. It seems likely she had both mania and depression. Some people with bipolar disorder do not have depression. So again, it seems to point to depressive symptoms. The other thing that stands out here is the use of Seroquel. It may have been prescribed because she was having psychotic symptoms, although it is used for other things as well, like helping people to get to sleep. So we really don't know why it was prescribed, but again, with its antipsychotic properties, it seems reasonable to believe she may have had psychotic symptoms. One of the difficulties with bipolar disorder is how the mania and the depression are so different. The person goes from one extreme to the other, and both types of episodes can be dangerous. Clearly, in this case, the theory is that Lamb was in the midst of a manic episode. 
It is possible that she stopped taking the medication that would help stabilize her mania, but continued to take the antidepressant, as I mentioned. Sometimes an antidepressant can push somebody more vigorously toward a manic episode. Now, with all this in mind, a few questions do come up in this case. Did the elevator video capture behavior consistent with a manic episode? There's not much to go on here, just that short video. I think the elevator door stayed open because she pressed too many buttons. It's also possible it was malfunctioning. In the video, it looked like she was energetic, perhaps a little impulsive. She pressed all the buttons and didn't understand why the door would not close. And then she started moving her hands around, perhaps talking to herself, but there's no audio, so there's no way to know for sure. Just looking at the video, it's impossible to definitively say if we're seeing a manic episode there, but the observed behavior could be explained by mania. Next question, can the circumstances of her death be explained by mania? The answer here is yes. It would explain why her phone was missing. It would explain why she removed all her clothing, and it could explain why she climbed into the water tank. That's certainly not an expected behavior, but mania is, I think, the best explanation for what happened here. There's no evidence that anyone else was with her or hurt her. Here's probably what happened. She took a trip because she was entering into a manic phase. She felt good, euphoric, enthusiastic. She wanted an adventure. As the mania intensified, she felt as though the medications were no longer necessary. This, of course, only adds fuel to the fire, and it is very common when people are going through a manic phase. Few people are compliant with medications during a manic episode. At some point on or about January 31, she loses her phone. She's captured on the surveillance video on February 1, behaving in a manner consistent with mania. At some point shortly after that, she uses the fire escape to get to the roof. The hatch on top of the tank was open, and even if it wasn't, it only weighed about 20 or 30 pounds, so she easily could have opened it. She removed her clothes and her wristwatch and threw them into the tank, and then she climbed in. Once inside, she had no way to escape, and she drowned. The removing of the clothes is part of something I've seen several times interacting with people in a manic phase. The clothes start to feel restrictive, and the inhibition is very low at that point. It's difficult to explain why she decided specifically to climb into a water tank. One theory is that she had seen the movie Dark Water that was released in 2005. The events that took place in this case were similar to the plot of that movie. Also, it could have been a coincidence. Now, of course, there are other theories in this case. I'll just review a couple here. Theory one, one or more criminals attacked her and threw her into the tank. Well, she died of drowning. Even though we see these theories that water was not found in her lungs, it seems fairly clear she did drown. So the criminals would have had to drown her somewhere else and then take her to the tank or keep her quiet as they took her to the tank. An important feature of the setup of this tank was that there was no ladder attached to it. Access was gained through a separate ladder that was put up against the tank each time someone wanted to climb to the top of it. At the time of her death, she weighed 121 pounds. It would be difficult to climb a ladder that was not attached to the tank while carrying that much weight. It would be difficult to do that even if the ladder was attached. Another problem with this theory, why would someone who killed her take off her watch and throw it into the tank. That doesn't really seem to make any sense. There was no sign of a struggle in her room and no sign that anyone else was there, period. So if they attacked her, they would have had to do it when she was in the hallway or somewhere else other than her room. Another popular theory is that demons were involved in her death. This theory seems to come up every time there's an unexplained death like this. If there were demons in the hotel, they did not check in so they were there illegally. Not very courteous. Although I guess to be fair, I don't think there was a no demon sign posted at that hotel. Considering the reputation of the Cecil Hotel, like all the deaths that have occurred there over the years, they may want to consider posting this sign. While they are at it, they may want to consider posting a no serial killer sign as well. They've had a couple there, including Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. The Cecil Hotel has been rebranded Stay at Main, I guess other fitting names were already taken, like Hotel Death, Diet Main, and Hotel Creepy. Also, 
These demons must have needed her cell phone, which seems kind of odd. I guess they ran out of minutes on their standard demons and family phone plan. No one at the hotel called Ghostbusters, so that seems to point away from this demon theory as well. I can appreciate how the circumstances of this case are unusual, and the elevator video has been described by many as creepy, but there's simply no evidence that this was a demon-involved homicide. The case of Elisa Lamb is both a tragedy and a mystery. I think it stands as a reminder about the dangers of bipolar disorder. Treatment and medication are crucial, but so is having people around who can monitor the symptoms. So these are my thoughts on the Eliza Lamb case. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.